Welcome back to Conan. We are in the clutches of the picks. It's the first scenario in the game, the base game, of course. There's lots of expansions now, which I don't have any. I'm not sure I will ever get them. But uh, this, I believe, is going to be the episode of Do or Die because we're running out of time. We have to rescue the princess who's here with the giant snake. And that's not going to be the easiest thing to do. All right, first thing we're going to do is, of course, we're going to look at our turn uh, tracker, and then we're going to have our heroes take their stance. Right, so we are beginning turn six, which means we have turn six, seven, and eight to take to get the head off the board, the shaman's head, and the princess. All right, Shavadis is going to be aggressive. All three are going to be aggressive this time. That's going to move two crystals over. He's got lots for activities. Over to Hadrathus. Hadrathus, the same thing. He is now going to change to aggressive. Two crystals are going to move over. However, he's going to lose Mitra's halo because when he spends, or when he goes from passive or uh, cautious to aggressive, the spell dissipates. So he needs to cast it again if he wants to, or maybe he doesn't. Over now to Conan. All right. Conan is also going to be going aggressive this turn. Two crystals move over. He is loaded for bear. So we're going to go uh, back to the main board. And our heroes are going to take their turns in whichever order I decide they're going to do it in. So let's go and have them do that. I think the first hero we're going to have to activate is Shavadis. He has an encumbrance value only of 4, which means he's evasive. So this hyena does not hinder him in any way. He has 3 free movement on his turn. So he's going to go 1, 2, 3. He is moving into the tent or the hut with the giant snake. And that didn't even, he didn't even spend any crystals to do that. But now he's going to attack the giant snake because we need to kill it. Because if he picks up the princess, it's an encumbrance of six. He cannot escape the giant snake because the giant snake has blocking. He would be no longer evasive. So we're going to try to kill the snake if we can. So, uh... Shavadis is going to take out his bow, and he's going to spend all four crystals at one time to activate his bow, which is going to let him roll four orange dice, plus the, uh, the crossbow rolls a red die. So he's going to be rolling four orange and one red die to attack the snake. So let's uh, adjust the camera and have him make this big crossbow attack. All right, so uh, the snake, if we just want to take a look at his stats quickly... Uh, he has three movement. He has three defense. So he has automatically three defense. So three hits are going to get negated right from this bow shot. So here we go with Shavadis' crossbow shot. And his crossbow shot does two, three, four, five hits. And I think he's going to spend a crystal to re-roll one of those dies. The orange one. Come on. And it doesn't do anything. Uh, so I think he's going to spend one more crystal and re-roll re it again. We're going to get as much damage as we can. And that's another one. So we have two, three, four, five, six hits. But that means three of them are automatically blocked by the snake's ability to absorb three damage before taking any damage. So three hits go through. Now the Overlord player can start spending dice to negate those hits. Uh, and I think he's going to spend one crystal to roll an orange die in defense and gets one. So that's going to cancel one hit. So Shavadis' ranged attack is going to do two damage to the snake. The snake goes from eight hit points down to six. Still very much alive. Now, Shavada still has two crystals in his active area, but I think he's going to uh, not do anything else. He could roll another melee attack using his Chris, uh, but that leaves him no d uh, dice for defense or anything else. So I think that's going to end his turn. And up next, I think we're going to probably have Hadrathus. All right, so Hadrathus is over here in the hut with a couple of blue uh, picked Hunters, and uh, I think he's going to use Teleport. 
So that's going to cost him one crystal to cast the spell, and then he's going to use a crystal for each space of movement. So he will spend three of them, I think. Oh man, I don't know what he wants to do really. Um, no, he's going to spend... Oh man, yeah, he's going to spend three crystals to teleport. So he's going to go one, two, and three to here. Uh, which you probably can't see that, but yeah. No, he's up here. Then he's going to spend three crystals to cast Lightning Storm. Yeah, so we can take a look at that spell. Uh, so he's going to cut his last three crystals. Attack an area in your line of sight, rolling two red dice. If you attack, if your attack power is greater than the defense power, the defender suffers damage equal to the difference. And uh, which now reminds me, there was one thing I forgot to do in the last episode. I'm going to do it right now. I activated the purple uh, hunters or the purple warriors last episode. I didn't move the guy at the bottom, so I'm going to move him one two to here just so I don't forget that. Should have done it earlier, but I remembered now because our wizard is going to be attacking everybody in this area. So he's going to be rolling two red dice. So let's hope he gets a lot of hits. And there's nothing the overlord can do about it. He can't roll defense. This is just lightning coming out of the sky. Let's hope he gets a lot of hits. Come on. And he ends up getting three, which is excellent. That's exactly what we wanted to get. Three hits because the purple guys, the warriors, have two defense, but one is going to get through. It's going to kill them. Red guys only have one defense, and the hyenas have no defense. So the lightning strike uh, basically obliterates all of them. So that is pretty awesome. That wipes out <laughs> this entire crew. But what it does do, though, is it leaves the wizard pretty vulnerable because he has no crystals left. But I wanted to clear the board a bit so that if we can rescue the princess, we can try getting her off the board. All right, up next is going to be Conan. I don't need to readjust the camera. Conan's going to do something. Uh, he is going to drop his leather armor. It is an encumbrance of two, so he's going to, this is a free action, he can just throw it down. He's going to, he tosses off his leather armor. The reason he's doing that is that now drops his total encumbrance to seven, which is going to give him back his two free movement points. When he was encumbered with the extra leather armor and the shaman's head, his encumbrance value was nine, which means he loses one movement every turn. I want his movement back to normal. So that's what he has. So he has two free movement, so he's going to do it right now. One, two. Costs him two to go through the flap. Now he's going to spend crystals, uh, and he's going to blast his way into this snake hut. And this is a wooden wall, so he can break through it. So he's going to, I believe this is how this works. He's going to spend one, two, three crystals for movement. So one to move here, and two to smash through the wall and because he has the wall smashing ability which we can look at right here uh, wall wrecker the character can spend it's supposed to be two extra movement points to move across a wall or wooden barrier so i'm not sure if that costs him four to get through the wall or just two now, i think it's just two um, extra movement although i don't know because it's two extra movement across a wall or wooden door from one area to an adjacent area. I think it's going to cost him to move one here, and I think, it, I think it costs him four to blast through the wall, which wouldn't make any sense because then he could go one, two, three, four, same thing. I think it costs him just two to blast through the wall. So that's three total movement. He bashes the wall down and comes in to attack the snake. So just from Zombie Side Black Plague, I'm going to, or the plastic token set from it. I'm going to use this blasted wall token to show that the back of that wall of the hut is destroyed. Conan now is going to attack the snake. Conan still has two, four, six crystals left. He's going to spend four of them on attack. Or should he spend five? 
I think he's going to spend actually five crystals on attack. He's going to do as much damage as possible, which means he's going to be rolling six red dice and he gets to re-roll one of them. So let's see what he can do. And he re-rolled one for free. So this is five. So that's five dice. I'm going to have to keep track of the hits now. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. Eight hits, nine, ten, eleven hits. And he gets to re-roll one. We'll re-roll this one. Eleven hits. Actually a total then of twelve hits on the snake. Which is awesome. Twelve hits on the snake. <laughs> wow, we might be able to kill the snake. Twelve hits on the snake. All right, keep that in mind. The snake has an armor of three, so that's going to mean nine hits going through on the snake. So I'm just going to leave the nine here. Uh, the snake has six hit points left. The overlord player is going to spend two crystals to roll two defense dice for the snake. So that's nine hits going through. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And the snake blocks four of them. So it is only going to take five damage. Yeah, nine hits, minus four, five damage. Not, oh, one hit point away from killing the snake. The snake goes from six hit points down to one. The snake is still alive. Darn it! Conan, not quite able to chop the snake's head off. Darn it! Really wanted to take the snake out. Conan has one crystal left. And the Overlord has none. Now, Conan could throw his battle axe <laughs> at the snake. I think that would be very thematic. Uh, because it has, the, it has the hand icon here, which means he can throw it. So he's going to spend one ranged attack. He has one crystal left. That's going to give him an orange die for the ranged attack. A red die for the... Uh, battle axe. Of course, the battle axe is going to end up on the ground when he throws it, so it will no longer be in hand. It will cost him a crystal to pick it up. But at this point in time, we just want to kill the snake. So he's going to roll an orange and a red. The Overlord player has no dice or no crystals remaining. He cannot reroll any. So if Conan can do four damage here with the thrown axe, it means the snake is killed. Come on! And Conan only does two damage. Not enough to kill the snake. He drops his battle axe. Ugh, darn it. Well, nice try, Conan. But it didn't work. All right, and that's going to conclude our... Wow, that's brutal. That's going to conclude the hero phase. We're going to move all the crystals now that the heroes used into their exhausted area. Up next is the Overlord. All right, there was a huge gamble for the heroes, and they fail the snake down to one health. Oh my goodness, that's just brutal. Overlord, gonna move five crystals over into this area. It's Overlord's turn. The Overlord will spend one crystal to activate the giant snake. He was just waiting for that. All right, we're gonna go to the board. Overlord is activating the giant snake. The giant snake has three orange dice to roll and it gets to re-roll all of them. Wow. Let's go see what it's going to oh, do. Right. The Overlord player laughs maniacally because the giant snake is going to be attacking Conan. Conan has no crystals to spend for defense. So every one of these hits against Conan is going to be damage because uh, Conan does not even have his leather armor anymore and Conan basically has no defense whatsoever. So the snake gets to roll three orange dice and gets to re-roll all of them. And so the snake does two damage to Conan and will re-roll these ones. Three, four. Okay, it could have been a lot worse. Conan going to take Four damage. But he's a big beefy guy. He can handle it, but that knocks four of his crystals into the wound area, uh, which is not going to help him much <laughs> in the following turns. All right, back to the uh, Overlord board to see if he's going to activate anything. Else. Right, the Overlord board. He just activated the snake. I think he is, in fact, going to activate his red picked hunters. That's going to cost him 
two crystals to do that. So let's go to the board. He's going to activate his red picked hunters. All right, and he only has two left because the wizard blew up the other ones in here. These guys have a movement, I should have said, of two. And they roll two yellow dice and they re-roll. So one, two. They both attack the wizard. Now, again, the wizard is in bad shape here because the wizard does not have any crystals left to spend. He did everything doing his lightning spell. Uh, so, and he has no defense. So once again, any hits on these yellow dice are going to be damaged. And they get to re-roll. They get to roll two and they get to re-roll them both. So the first picked gets zero hits, re-rolls them, gets one. So Harathus will take one damage from the first picked hunter. The second one will be doing the same thing. Gets one hit and gets will re-roll the one that missed. Two hits. All right, so that's going to be two more damage to Harathus. Again, not critical, but that's just damage that's not going to be coming back for our heroes. And that, I'm going to zoom out, is going to conclude uh, turn six. And uh, so we'll wrap it up once I readjust the All camera. Right, what could have been an epic episode turned into one that wasn't quite as epic. <laughs> so we've had uh, our rogue Shabbatus come in here, shoot the snake with his bow, doing some damage. And then Conan going berserk, coming in here, blasting the wall down, attacking the snake with his battle axe, and then throwing the battle axe at the snake. Just couldn't take the snake out. It's down to one hit point. So close. And then we had our wizard doing the lightning spell, getting rid of five enemies on the board, but he ends up getting attacked by uh, picked hunters that do him three damage. So to uh, end off, we have Shabbatus at full health. We have Haratrus, our wizard here, has four damage now, four wounds that are not going to come back. So does Conan. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty terrible. So uh, join me next time for turn seven. Once again, our heroes only have two turns remaining to try and get the princess out of here and um, get the severed head of the shaman off the board. I'm not sure they're going to be able to do it. Join me next time to find out. So thanks so much for your subscriptions, your comments, your likes. Really much appreciated. We'll see you next time.